Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast. It's time for the view from the opposition Newcastle head down to the Etihad on Saturday to face Manchester City in the FA Cup. I'm joined by football writer from the Manchester Evening News, Joe Gray. And Joe, welcome to the podcast. How are you keeping you well? Not too bad, thanks. I feel like I'm on every week with the uh, the City Newcastle games going on this season. Yeah, there's been a few, hasn't there? Um, and unfortunately, uh, Newcastle, at least in the league, they've lost both of them. In the Cowboy Cup, it was a, a much better result for Newcastle. And that'll be what Newcastle fans are clinging to, that in a one domestic cup, they've dumped City out of it already. So why not a, a second one? Um, what are you expecting from City on Saturday? How seriously are they taking this game? And uh, you know, a chance to, to, to get the treble this season? Well, I think, I can't remember the exact amount, but they're on a run of, I think, 20 plus games unbeaten. And when they're in this time of the season, they really value just taking every game one by one, win it, box it off onto the next one. They won't be thinking about Arsenal, which is next in the league. They will only be thinking about this one. And, you know, Guardiola might make changes, but he will defend himself and say it's it's only because of fitness and injury concerns. It's not to do with anything else. He will... I think once they get to this stage of the season and there there are titles on the horizon, the squad sort of focus their minds and they know exactly what to do. Like earlier in the season, they can they can experiment, they can do different things, but um, it's all about winning for City at the moment and they tend to, to know what they're doing. And I think the fact that they've had a week between the game at Liverpool at the weekend and, and now this one has not been a game in midweek, I think that will help just with the fitness. There was a couple of mentions of tiredness and fatigue they've had a few days off they'll be able to focus fully on this one they've not got anything after that because it's obviously the international break so I would expect they go quite strong for this one from a City point of view. Yeah, for those who've listened to the match preview with myself and John Gibson I think John was maybe clutching at straws when he suggests that hopefully Manchester City um, don't take this game as seriously as uh, the two games previously, Liverpool and Manchester United, and the Arsenal game, as Joe has mentioned there. But uh, I said to him, I don't think somehow Pep will allow his players to uh, to do that and become complacent because, of course, you know when you're going for titles, it's all about more momentum, isn't it? And like you say, they're on a fantastic uh, run of form at this moment. Uh, let's start, though, with uh, the potential uh, absence of... Kevin De Bruyne, there's some quotes come out um, on Thursday afternoon about him not being able to train or play, so he's not been included in the, the, the Belgian squad. Um, now, what do we read about that? Is that, you know, is he, is, he, is, he, is he totally out of the game on Saturday or do you think he's going to be protected and then he'll end up playing and he, he might not train, but he'll end up, you know, playing some part? What, what's your understanding? The understanding I've got is that he will, he will, will be back after the international break, which heavily suggests he won't be available to to face Newcastle. He's had sort of an ongoing hamstring injury probably for about a year ago. This time last year, we learned he was playing with a hamstring. It sort of tweaked at the Champions League final and he had to come off. Then he's recovered over the summer, suffered a setback on the opening day. He's out for five months. He's come back, as Newcastle found out, at St. James's in brilliant form. And then he's got a couple of sort of setbacks, I think last week or the week before, he remained on the bench and didn't even warm up. And he had a, a bit of a niggle in the hamstring. This is now a groin injury. Um, so it's something different, but he's just, he's not been able to shake these little injuries that um, could become a little bit bigger. So I think now they've, they know what it's like to be without De Bruyne for a few months. So they don't want that to happen again. So if he's got a minor groin injury or strain or whatever it is, I don't think they would risk him for this. And they also know how to play without him. They've gone half a season with Julian Alvarez, Phil Foden, Bernardo Silva sort of it operating in those spaces. Um, I don't think he will be playing, but I also don't think he's a longer term risk or doubt looking ahead to the Arsenal game at the end of the month. Hmm. So that's good news for, for Newcastle because as you say, they got to see him at his very best at that game. It was up at St. James's Park. Um, but as you say, it just points to the squad depth that City have got. You know, they can rely on other world-class players to to fill in for a world-class player, which is uh, not something Newcastle United can do and not, not something that, that many teams can do. How has Pep managed to, I guess, you know, fill the void of, of Kevin De Bruyne? And, and, and like you say, it's not going to matter too much that, he, that he's possibly missing from, from Saturday's game. I think the start of the season, it was more Alvarez who played in that role behind Haaland and he, he's got the winner in the league game at the Etihad, sort of linking up with Foden. Foden's coming inside because Kyle Walker bombs up the right and it they, they'd done really well sort of 
uh, creating an overload in those number 10 areas. And then slowly Foden became the number 10 choice because he's obviously had such a good season and he's put his money where his mouth is. He's always said he wants to play number 10, but never had the run of games. And he got the run of games and he started scoring a load of goals and really scoring big goals, winning goals and impacting City's performances. De Bruyne comes back and Foden's got to move out again onto the wing because that's the pecking order. De Bruyne is a number 10 and probably one of the best in the world um, in that position. Uh, Foden's still done quite well coming inside from the opposite side, really, the left where he's he's been doing well. But I would, I would imagine that this is a chance for Foden to come back. Alvarez didn't have the best game against... Liverpool, he's sort of been moved around a bit now, Alvarez, to to accommodate everyone. And um, it's a blow for City that De Bruyne isn't there. But when you've got Foden playing as well as he has been doing, and if Alvarez has a bit more space and he can play in more of his natural sort of areas, I think that could be quite good for him after a, a few inconsistent performances. I can hear our listeners screaming, please stop mentioning mm-hmm. players, Joe, that have had such good weeks <laughs> because, you know, Ford and Brilliant in the, the Manchester Derby and in like, so you could list a host of other names who have really picked up form of late. What is it about City kind of in the second half of the season which just kind of sets them apart from, from everybody else, do you think? I think it's experience and they've just got this. They all, If you speak to any of the players, they they're not bothered about trebles or title races or or anything. They just they know what it's like to win. They want to win, but they just know that the best way to do it is just take it one game at a time. And it's 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 worked for them so many times. Why would you leave that winning formula? And you've got players who have four or five Premier League titles under their belt. You've got every member of the squad pretty much has five trophies that they've won in the last twelve months. They, this is a team that know how to win and know how to sort of cope with these weeks where they've got three three games in a week, big games, different competitions. I think they had United, Liverpool, Newcastle in an FA Cup quarter final, and Arsenal in March. And the question to Pep was, is this going to define your season? And he said, yeah, it's going to define our season until April defines our season because we just want to get through March and be in April to be in contention. And he will they will only talk about trebles and winning competitions when they're one game away. And I think I remember asking Pep at St. James's if he's not disappointed, but if there's any regret that they can't win the quadruple back in uh, in September. And he looked at me like I'd offended his ancestors. It was There was no thought of, of winning trophies that early in the season, but now they're close. They've done what they can to get there. They, they know what they need to do to to get over the line. And I'm not that's not saying they're going to win all these competitions. Newcastle's a tricky game. Anything can happen in the Champions League. There's a three-horse race in the Premier League. But if you're looking at the team who know who've been there and done it, it's City and they they uh I wouldn't want to come up against them if I was in a title race or or in a cup competition. And is it the fact that Pep Guardiola values each competition as important as the next? Because when you are a big team and you're fighting for the Champions League and Premier League, sometimes the domestic cups can get left behind. But it, it does seem like you know he really wants to win the FA Cup just as much as he maybe wants to win the Premier League or the Champions League. They all mean so much to him. Well, I think until last year, he'd only won one, one FA Cup, Cup, if I'm right. And he kept saying that they'd get to semi-finals and it was just one of those things that kept eluding them and how tough it is. And if City can go into the international break 23, 24 games unbeaten... That that's good. And then go into the international break having lost and they're out of the competition and everyone's talking about that they're not going to win the treble again. It's a bit negative. So it's all about the momentum, I think. And if they can come back, they will hope without too many injuries from the international break, they can then go to Arsenal and continue that momentum. And I think you would have to admit that City aren't playing as well as they have done previously. They're not as sort of free flowing. They're, they're playing a bit differently this season and they do have a couple of weaknesses, but they're still finding a way to win. And if they're not going to win, uh, the drawing or, as they said, at, at Liverpool on, on Sunday, if we don't play well, we're at least not losing. And that's obviously one of them cliches, but it's, it's, it's something that you always attribute to the best teams, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. And tell you what, let's go into those weaknesses mm-hmm. now that you mentioned. What are the weaknesses that Newcastle United can exploit? Because they're going to have to find the secret somehow. They've got a tendency to concede the first goal in in recent games. They've, I think, the most common scoreline, if I'm right, is three one this year. So there's a few games where in the Champions League, a simple ball down the middle, they've been caught out and they've gone a goal behind and they've got to come back. They often do, but sometimes they don't. If you look at the game against Chelsea, 
uh, I think last month they drew 1-1 because they had all these shots on goal, but they'd let a, a sort of a silly ball over the top. Raheem Sterling scores and they just can't find that that goal that turns a draw into a win. So if Newcastle were to sort of potentially play on the break, they did a little bit in the league, didn't they, at St. James's? They, they were a bit direct and uh, I think that could work. Um, but you never know. It's, it's easy saying this, you know, score the first goal, but nine times out of ten City will still come back and uh, I think they got one of the best records from from losing positions as well um, but I think City's clean sheets this year is quite low compared to other years um, so there's a, there's a potential for scoring definitely it's just if you can catch City then on an off day where they're maybe not scoring all, all these chances that they're creating or the crowd maybe gets a bit nervous um, there is chances um, it's certainly not the most polished City team we've seen but they're still, they've still got Erling Haaland who can score goals out of nothing. And, uh, you know, Foden's in brilliant form. Doku can excite the crowd and, and nearly got a winner at Anfield. They've, they've got lots and lots of options. And if they don't, if those players aren't firing, Rodri tends to pop up with a goal out of out of nowhere. It's, it's, it's one of those where you can sort of dangle the carrot, but then City will take it away and still win 3-1. Yeah, so Rodri does pop up and then uh... dare... You can bet that a few fans are, are maybe putting someone on him doing the same on Saturday. But good to hear that City aren't mm -hmm. uh, unbeatable. And I think that's, you know, Newcastle fans are probably bringing a bit of blind faith into this one. You know, why can't Newcastle beat City again in the cup competition? You know, maybe Newcastle playing so badly that it's just their time to actually beat the best team in the world. And I'm, I'm liking that positively. That's what I'm, um, I'm going on. Um, another injury, Edison out injured. I mean, how big of a blow is that? It wouldn't have affected this game at all because Stefan Ortega is the cup goalkeeper. He plays all the domestic cup games, um, including the FA Cup final last year. He's probably, it's a cliche, isn't it? But the best number two around. I can't think of many. Um, I know we saw Kelleher for, for Liverpool have a really good game, but Ortega is as close to Edison as you can get, really. He's not as good with the ball, but he's still a very good shot stopper, got good distribution. Um, I think Bayern Munich wanted him in the summer as an illustration of, of just how good he is. And he came on at Anfield after Edison got injured, giving away a penalty and produced some really good saves and, and secured a draw for City. So Ortega would have started anyway. He started in the in the Carabao Cup. He's, he's only really had one bad game in his two years at, at City and that was in the Carabao last year when they went out to Southampton and since then he's he's been really really dependable and he's he's one of those where he's too good to be a number two but he's also not as good as Edison so this is going to be a chance for him where against Liverpool against Newcastle potentially probably against Arsenal he's got a chance and it's slow to lose Edison but Ortega is not it, it makes the blow not as big as it could have been Am I right in think did he come on against Newcastle in the league game? Did Edison get an injury in that game? He got he got caught, didn't he? Anyway, maybe he didn't potentially. Come I wasn't there. I was the following it from afar, been... wishing I was there because it looked like such a good game with end to end chances. And... Well, yeah. the end of it wasn't a good game from the Newcastle point of view. But yes, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what take out. in terms of of Newcastle. Their form is not great. They're very inconsistent on the road. They're, they're pretty dreadful. They have, though, you know, beaten Sunderland, Fulham and Blackburn in the FA Cup so far on the road. So there's another little positive, although they were shocking against Blackburn, um, to be fair, scraped through on penalties. Against Chelsea in the league in the last game, wasn't good. Um, Eddie Howe, you know, trying to, to find any positive he can do, but I think the fans were kind of all in agreement that it was, it was a pretty dire performance and it's not really set people up in high hopes for this Saturday. And one of the big talking points was whether Newcastle um, should have sat deep against Chelsea and tried to absorb the pressure and hit them on the counter. What they did was try to, you know, get the high press in, but they were lacking intensity. Um, I mean, does it really matter what they do against City? If they sit deep, if they try and high press, will, will either system work? We've seen both systems work, so you, you can sort of, park the bus and hope that City don't score one of the many chances and and play on the break and that that does work and City have dropped points playing that system they've also dropped points against teams who come out and attack them and uh, take the game to them but I think in both scenarios you've got to get lucky and you've got to hope that City have an off day I think if you look at the yes it was at St James's but the Carabao game 
where Newcastle did win. City made changes, Newcastle made a few, but I think Newcastle sensed at half time that there was a game to win and they, they brought on the big guns and they really got the crowd behind them and uh, it will be different at the Etihad, but also if you can get that big Newcastle following really noisy and, and playing a part, you never know. I just don't think Guardiola is going to make as many changes as he did that day because we're in a quarter final now and there's no big games either side in the midweek. He can really focus on this game and I would I would expect he goes strong. But that doesn't mean that Newcastle are out of it because I think Guardiola has a bit of a fear about Newcastle, especially how they were last season, the quality of the players they've got. He's he talks them up as a sort of contenders next season when you when Newcastle are probably not going to be playing in Europe, having that that time to prepare for each game that they really did last season and use that to their, their advantage. When he's naming how difficult the league's going to be next year, Newcastle are always there. So I think he will take it seriously because he knows the threat that Newcastle can pose. And if it wasn't for one good De Bruyne ball and some nice footwork from Oscar Bob, then they would have dropped points again at St. James's Park in the league. So he'll, he'll remember that. And the, there's never been a, there's not been a really one-sided game between these sides in the last, few meetings I don't think it's always been really close one goal in it and I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same on uh, on Saturday there you go that leads us to the to the final mm-hmm. question Joe and it's, it's a very simple one what will the score be I think I think City will win I'll also back Newcastle to score so I'll go to one potentially after extra time oh do you know what I think we lost your connection there so I'll just repeat the score <laughs> I'm hoping it was a good one in Newcastle's favour I'll say 2-1 City, potentially after extra time. You know, after extra time, <laughs> so it's going to get more minutes uh, under the Newcastle's belt, which they certainly don't need because of the lack of options to change it up. Um, but you know what? I've actually, I'm actually finishing this episode feeling a little bit more positive than I was coming into it. Um, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what you've said, but you've made me feel a little <laughs> bit more optimistic than I was. This is uh, what City we... do, though. They, they drag you in, they give you hope, and then they still beat you anyway. Yeah, three or four nil probably. <laughs> I can't see Newcastle United getting through and I would love to say it's going to be a close game because I don't want to sit here uh, 24 hours before and say they're going to get absolutely hammered. But I think the the, the midfield issue Newcastle United have got that they're so open that if, it doesn't, if he doesn't decide to play five at the back, which is what I would do, I don't think I will do, I can see Man City quite comfortably getting you know, two, three maybe and I think they could be out of sight by half time just because Newcastle... The lack in energy, the lack in organisation. I've just taught myself from a high right down <laughs> to a low. Um, but yeah, look, I think City are going to get through, unfortunately, in Newcastle going into that season without silverware. But you never know. The FA Cup is made for these moments. The FA Cup is made for the underdog. That's exactly what Newcastle United are. They've shown this season they can go toe-to-toe with Man City and they've been very unfortunate only to pick up one win against them in three games. Um, so you never know. But uh, we will wait and see. Joe, thank you as always for popping on to the podcast. Much appreciated. To you guys listening, thank you as always. Head over to chroniclelive.co.uk for all the latest Newcastle United news, including Eddie Howe's press conference ahead of Newcastle's trip to Manchester City in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup. <laughs>